Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're going to be taking a look at Seduction OS. This is a very interesting operating system because it is a community-based OS. But before we get started, please don't forget to like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we are producing, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. Now, we are presently on Seduction's website, which is seduction.org. I'll be sure to include that link in the description below. And when you come to their site, you've got your regular stuff up here. You've got forum, you've got news, you've got download, which goes through installation, parcels, and mirror. You've got your gallery. You've got a help with a manual and a wiki. And then, of course, you've got development. Now, if you go over here, you can turn a light mode on or a dark mode to the website. If you click on forum... It takes you over to their forum, which is very, very informative. If you need anything answered or you have questions or you're just having general problems, you can zip on over here and this will help you get the answers that you need. So we will go back over to the home. And if you come down just a little bit, it says, Welcome to Seduction. It's an operating system based on the Linux kernel and the GNU project. In addition, there are applications and libraries of Debian's. Now, the name is actually a play on words. SID which stands for the code name of Debian Unstable, and then Seduction in the sense of seducing something. So, Seduction is a rolling release due to the coupling to the Debian SID. In concrete terms, this means that the release of a new version does not make it necessary to reinstall the complete system. And then you come down to the background. It's been around since 2011, and the objective of the distribution was and is to involve its users. Wherever it makes sense, the community should have a say in what the operating system is. Although free software and free drivers are always preferred, non-free variants are by no means prevented. So that means if you need to have a non-free driver to run your NVIDIA card or anything else on your system, they don't block it from being used, okay? And then down here, it tells you who they're supported by, but they've got a pretty decent website. It's got a lot of information, a lot of help areas, and things like that. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to close out the website and go over to the desktop. And if you download Seduction OS, throw it on a USB, or boot it up into a virtual machine, this is the screen you're met with. It's based in the LXQT desktop environment, which is a great lightweight desktop environment. You've got a great wallpaper out of the box, but of course, if you do want to change the wallpaper, you could just right-click. You can create new, paste, invert selection, create launcher, or desktop preferences. Let's open that up. And when it opens up, you've got general, background, slideshow, advanced. Now, you can shade it. If you click, it turns into a shade, and you can move it wherever you want on the desktop. And then that way it's not taking up so much room. And then when you need to go back to it, you can just click on that and it drops down. Now, you can come down here and you can try to get your cursor where you want to resize it. Okay. Or you can right click up here and go resize. And then you can just drag your cursor around, get to the size you want, and go ahead and hit a button. But there you go. Under general, you've got icon size, which starts out at 48 by 48. You can adjust that however you want to, bigger, smaller. It's really up to you. Then you can come to background. You can select a background color. Wallpaper, you can zoom the image to fill the entire screen, or you can change the settings however you want to here. And then, of course, your different wallpapers would be right here. This is the one that we're running, and it looks like you're just going to have the same one. But this is where you would go and put your wallpapers in. It would be under User, Share, Wallpapers, add them right here, and then they would fall into your selection. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And then, of course, you've got Slideshow. If you want to enable a slideshow for wallpapers, all you got to do is go here. And then, of course, wherever you have that folder on your system, link it to it right here. And then those wallpapers would actually scroll and do a slideshow. And then advanced. You can have home on the desktop, trash, computer, or network. And then if you click apply, it would put them all over here. So I'm going to go ahead and uncheck those. That's really a personal preference of mine. But if you want those there, that's how you put them on the desktop. So we will go ahead and close out of that. As you can tell, you've got one panel down on the bottom. On the right-hand side, you've got power. Then you've got date and time, sound, and it says notification, one unattended. And it says LXQT configuration monitor, default monitor settings have been applied, so that's fine. you got your clipboard, removable media, and device manager, network, language, and then, of course, your caps lock, number lock, scroll lock. So if you hit caps lock, you can see that highlights and lets you know that the caps is locked. So you have that down there. 
Now, if you right-click on the panel, you can configure your task manager, move your task manager, or remove it. You can also configure the panel if you want to. So let's go ahead and open that up. And then right here, it says size, it's 32. And then icon size is 22, and then links 100. Now, if you wanted to change the size of the panel, you could just come up here and click it up. And as you can tell on the bottom, it's getting a little bigger. So you can adjust that there. And then of course, alignment, you can center, left, or right align it. And then position, bottom of the desktop, left of the desktop, right, and top. You can pretty much put it wherever you want. I'll leave it up top until we get done here. And then also you have widgets, application menu, desktop switcher, volume control. And then you can add different widgets over here. And then you can do a search for them, okay? And once you have the widgets that you want, you can just click add widget and it'll automatically add it to your panel. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Right click again, configure panel, manage widgets. You can manage your widgets from right here. Add new panel if you want more than one panel or you can lock this panel. So once you have it set up the way you want, just lock it. It's not gonna change or move anywhere. Then we're gonna come over to the left. You've got desktop one, desktop two. You got show desktop and then LXQT configuration center. Let's check this out. Let's go ahead and maximize this so you can see better. Over here, you have appearance if you click on it. It opens up right here, and right now it lets you know your widget styles are fusion. You can change these if you want. You can change them to plastic, motif, add weta. I'm going to leave them on fusion. And then your QT palette. The colors are your windows, the window text. You can come in here and really customize this to the way you want it. Or you can set it to use GTK themes if you want to, what GTK theme you want to use, and then you can apply it down here. Just gives you a way to kind of customize it a little bit more. And then toolbar button style. Right here, you can have the text appears beside the icon. You can make it appear under, only display the text, only display the icon. You can pretty much set this up any way you want. And then once you set it the way you want, just click apply. Then you've got an icon theme. Right now, we're using the papyrus theme. If you wanted to use the papyrus dark, you would just select it, click apply, and then you could change your icons across your operating system. LXQT theme. Right now, we're on winter sky. As you can see here, you have plenty of different choices. You've got like an ambiance. Let's go ahead and apply that. And as you can see, it lightens up up top, kind of changes your look a little bit. And that kind of looks good. I think I'll leave that there. But you've got clear looks, dark, frost, KDE plasma, Cavantum, leech. You've got different ways down here to change the look of your operating system up. You can also override the user to find wallpaper. And then fonts. You can come over here and adjust your fonts in LXQT. And then cursor. You can change from a breeze cursor, you can use breeze light or add weta. I'm going to leave it where it is and we're going to close out of that. Then of course you can adjust brightness, date time, desktop, desktop notifications, file associations. You have a lot of different settings in here you can adjust and make more personable for your desktop experience. Now, the way you update, download software, Synaptic Package Manager. Let's go ahead and open it up. And once it opens up, let's go ahead and maximize it so we can see it. You can come over here, you've got a lot of different categories, and then below those categories, you've got sections, you've got status, which would be all installed, installed local or obsolete, and then installed manual, it'll break those down for you, okay? And then you've got origin, let you know what repositories they come from, custom filters, are they broken, community maintained, marked changes, search results, it'll keep a track of all your searches that you do for different software, and then architecture whether it's all, arch all, arch AMD 64. So we'll go back up to sections. Now you can go through these sections and let's say you were looking for video software, you could come over here. It'll show you Pipewire, SM Player, SM Tube. It pretty much shows you things that are installed. Now if you're looking for something specific, come up here, click search. You could type in whatever piece of software you're looking for. Once it pops up, you could come over here Mark it for installation. Once you mark it for installation, come up here and click apply, and it will automatically install the piece of software, okay? And if you come up top, you do have other options. You can edit. You can reload package information, add a CD-ROM, settings, preferences, repositories, toolbar. Do you want it text below icons, icons only, help? And it just kind of helps you customize Synaptic Package Manager for your workflow and the way you like to do things. So that's Synaptic Package Manager. Let's go ahead and close out of that. And let's go ahead and close out of that. Now, if you come up to the app menu, it's going to have accessories. You've got terminal. Let's go ahead and double check the terminal here. 
what I want to see. Oh, it pops right up. It has top running out of the box. Right now, we have three gigabytes of RAM issued to this virtual machine. At rest with just the terminal open, you are using a whopping 537 megabytes. That's pretty lightweight, guys. It's not two or 300 like some of the XFCE desktops, but it's still lightweight. So if you're wanting to use this on a newer PC, you're going to have a PC that's going to be really responsive and really quick. And then if you want to put it on an older PC, it's going to keep that older hardware up to date so you can actually use it and be productive with it. So let's go ahead and close out of that terminal. Back up to the app menu. And then you've got Feather Notes, LXQT File, Archiver, PC Man, File Manager. So you open that up. Let's make it a little bigger, shall we? And as you can see, it's a base file manager. It's light, stays out of your way, lets you get your work done. Over here, you got the usual suspects. Then you've got your home folders right here. And then, of course, different options, file, edit, view, go, bookmarks, everything that you need in a file manager. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Back up to the app menu. You have Midnight Commander, which is more of a terminal-based file manager. So it does have Plank, so I'm pretty sure if we click on Plank, it drops in a dock down here. So you could have your toolbar up top, and then you could have Plank down here, okay? Let's go back up top. Then you got Clipper, Zim Desktop Wiki, then Games, Graphics, Flameshot. You have Gimp out of the box, Image Magic, Inkscape out of the box, Screen Grab, Firefox, as your web browser, Thunderbird is your mail client. Qubit Torrent is your torrent client. LibreOffice is installed out of the box. Sound and video, you got Audacious, Pulse Audio, Volume Control, SM Player, SM Tube. I really like SM Tube. If you're not familiar with SM Tube, if you like to watch YouTube but don't necessarily like having to go online to do it, I like SM Tube for the simple fact that it'll show things here. But what you can do is you can go up here and type a search term, eBuzz Central. I'll just put in my channel. And what it'll do is it'll do a search. And there's my most recent video. And it'll put them in the order that they've been uploaded. And then I can just click on that right there. And if I want to play it, just click play. And it'll load my video up and start playing it. I can watch YouTube hey right here without having to go online. So if that's something that you would like to do, I would definitely take a look at SMTube inside Seduction. Or if you're using another Linux distro, Zip on over to your repository or your software center or terminal and download it. Back over to sound and video. You got XF Burn, MPB Media Player, System Tools, Gparted, Kernel Remover, Set Password, Seduction Handbook, Preferences, LXQT Settings, Alternatives Configurator, Screen Saver, Synaptic, we already looked at, About, Leave, Lock Screen, and Search. That's pretty much in a nutshell what Seduction OS is. Community-based operating system, which means the community has a big say in what's put in the operating system. It's based on Debian Unstable, but at the end of the day, even with Unstable, Debian is a solid operating system. So if you're looking for something new to try out, something that is different, something that is Debian-based, I suggest running on over to seduction.org, downloading it, throwing it on a USB, putting it in a virtual machine, and taking it for a test drive. Is that something you might do? Let me know in the comments below. Do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we are producing, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.